Hey guys, this is Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in my lab in Denver, Colorado, and I wanted to show you guys how I make um, spore syringes out of fresh fruiting bodies. So I've got a nice flush of chestnut mushrooms here, um, also known as Foliota adiposa. So one thing that happens when you're growing a lot of mushrooms is that eventually your cultures might start to degrade over time. Um, this is called senescence and in nature um, senescence is prevented by different phenotypes being formed every time spores germinate. So I'm going to be recreating new phenotypes like what would happen in nature by taking the spores from these fresh fruiting bodies and transferring them onto these glass plates and then putting those spores into solution in this syringe, a sterile syringe, and then I'm going to take that solution and plate it out or add it directly to spawn. That way you know, the different spores are gonna germinate and I'll have a new genetics or what they call phenotypes. So, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I prefer to use glass plates. Um, I just got these from, you know, some picture, picture frames. I really like using glass because you can see the spore prints, especially when you're identifying wild strains and it's very easy to take the, the spores off of glass and put them in a solution. So I'll start off just by um, selecting, you know, the best mushrooms from this, uh, from this flush. So ideally, um, you want a mushroom that is ready to drop its spores. Um, so I can see on this, this mushroom right here, um, there's a little sporulation from this one above it. So this one looks like a prime mushroom that I'm gonna take um, out of this cluster. So I'll just uh, go ahead and take this guy out. And since I have two plates, I'll go ahead and take this big guy Now, it's uh, not important to be super sterile at this point because these came from the grow room. But I like to work in the hood always just to prevent any kind of contamination. So now that I have my mushrooms selected, I'm gonna go ahead and spray down work area with some alcohol, get that out of the way, and as that is evaporating, it's killing any bacteria that might be on the glass. So I'll just go ahead and remove the stem from the mushroom so I have a really nice cap. And you can see how healthy that cap is. Um, it's really important just to select, you know, the best quality mushrooms because that's what the genetics you're going to be collecting. All right, so that is almost dry. That's okay, I just won't put that mushroom there. Alright, so one of the tricks that I use to help induce sporulation is that I'll take a little piece of a paper towel here and mist it down with some 3% hydrogen peroxide. And then I'm just going to put that right at the edge. Oh, 
of the glass plate. So you want to make sure that you have really clean glasses too because I'm going to just cover, cover the cap of the mushroom with the glass and also include the corner of that paper towel so any moisture from the hydrogen peroxide is going to get wicked into this chamber here which is going to hold the humidity and that's going to induce a nice spore print so i'll go ahead and leave these overnight um, usually it takes about 24 to 48 hours to get a really nice print and in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and uh, harvest some more chestnuts, but I'll come back in a couple of days and show you how I finish um, taking the spores and putting them into solution and making my syringe here. So I'll see you in a couple of days. What's up guys? It's been about 24 hours on the dot and here are the results of my spore prints. So. Before we get started, I just want to note that I also sterilized about 300 mils of water. Um, so this is a cool down and sterile. Um, that is what I'm going to be hydrating these spores with. Um, another tool that I like to use is just this thumbtack and that just makes it easy to lift the mushrooms off the glass plates. And then I also use just a, a sterilized blade, I guess. Um, it's not sterile, but I'll just spray some alcohol on there and um, that works pretty good. I'll use that to scrape off the spores. And then this is our sterile needle. This actually is sterile. Um, this is what I'm gonna use to aspirate the spores after they're hydrated in this water. So let's go to the moment of truth here. Um, this is one of my favorite parts about making spore prints is getting to look at the spore print. So hopefully they drop their spores. Um, so we'll start with this cap here. You can see that uh, the paper towel is dried off, but the top of the glass right here still has some condensation. So that was like the perfect atmosphere for the mushroom to drop the spores. So I'll let's see a close up here of this spore print. Oh yeah, that is a beautiful looking spore print. So the mushroom gods delivered. Um, you can see that that's a really nice dense spore print. So it worked. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Um, this is dried from the alcohol, and I'll carefully scrape off a good amount of these spores. Into solution. So I'm just gonna go ahead and scrape with this blade that was sprayed with alcohol and then I'm going to try to get as many of those spores into the solution as I can. I don't know if you can see that but there they go. It's almost turning an amber color which is really nice and a characteristic of the foliota adiposa. So I'll go ahead and show you up close. That is what I'm shooting for. So that's a pretty dense solution of spores. It's um, definitely more than what I'm gonna need to fill up this syringe, but it's always good to have some backup jars of spores in case something happens to your spore syringe. Um, there we go, you can see it's almost like an amber color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this syringe here. All 
and I like to take off the needle for this part just because it's a little bit of a bigger bore and that way it'll really mix them up when I go to aspirate and it's pretty simple um, you just want to make sure that the water isn't too hot at this point but it's cooled overnight so I'll go ahead and aspirate about 10 mils and there you have it that is a spore syringe ready for inoculation I usually let these hydrate about 12 hours before I'll use them um, but I don't know I feel like you can get away with inoculating plates right away and even if you had some grain spawn that you want to inoculate um, they'll probably be okay but just in case the spores were a little bit dry, which I know that they're super fresh, so I can go ahead and inoculate these. Um, but if you're going to ever save a spore print, one of the good things about having these glass, um, these glass spore prints is, for this one, let's say I wanna save this spore print for later use. Um, I, I can't make these syringes right now. So I'll go ahead, remove the cap, and sterilize the other side of this glass or both sides um, just clean it real good with alcohol and you can go ahead and sandwich that spore print between the two panes of glass um, that's a really good way to store them for long term but like this video if you found it useful subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos like this and share it uh, i really enjoy teaching the ways of mycology and I should be having some more videos in the future so much love.